if a man visiting us from another planet in something like a flying saucer were to hover down and look at what sort of creature is inhabiting this earth, what would he see? Let's take a look and get some idea of his view. This is the kind of creature he would find inhabiting this planet. A sprawly, nubbly thing with various lines connecting bits of it. That would be, in his view, the kind of thing that we are. For you see, how many things we are depends upon the point of view which one takes. When I was learning to fly, my mind was overloaded. Task saturation. Rickety interpretations of the moment were in a cage fight with whatever stored information I had managed to keep in my brain. Thoughts stacked up and were clanging around like sneakers in the dryer. It can be so overwhelming. Sometimes I would forget I was learning an art that will be, in the end, something relaxing, fun even, calming. As I gained experience, the long cross-country flights transformed from a daunting endeavor full of notes and tasks and things I didn't want to screw up into a meditation. Flying at sunset or at night, or really any time, has become the most singular, whole, focused experience. The sum of all those moving parts from before is now a stillness, a zen. But I did not see this coming, especially in the early phases of training. Everything was new information, begging for space in my conscious mind. My brain processed everything coming in as a separate thought. Every gauge seemed to demand my attention, every radio call, every switch, every control. It's hard not to focus too much on the wrong things. It felt like my thoughts were being arbitrated by some neurological United Nations committee, an overlapping array of foreign languages. If only you could put on one of those headsets that blare translation into your ears in real time. There were moments during my training when I would sometimes ask my instructor, can we just cruise for a few minutes? Can we just take this all in? I just wanted three minutes without moving from one task to another, or wondering if my instructor was gonna pull the throttle and announce a surprise engine out emergency drill. I just wanted a little taste of why I'm even doing this and imagine what it will be like when I'm on my own. Eventually it all came together. I passed my check ride after five months of hard work, free now to do whatever I want. Have to admit, there's a little bit of a Stockholm syndrome when you finish training. Now you can go anywhere, you can do anything. So what will it be? I was no longer thinking of 73 different actions or thoughts at any time. They became a single motion, a flow state, one mind, one airplane, infinite sky, just let it go. I had nothing to prove. When I flew solo on long flights without thinking of every little thing anymore, I got to another place, real time. I think this is what my dad probably loved the most about flying and about aviation, that quiet, that calm, 
I wish I could ask him. You're all alone. The world's happening below you without you in it. Your thoughts slow down. Time slows down. All you have is the moment and whatever's clanging around in your head. <laughs> 